How's it going, everybody? It's Wolfgang Lozana and Melissa Arroyo here. <laughs> That's a good try. <laughs> yeah, I, I try my best, uh, but I'm white. And we're here with another awesome video here. And today, um, it is Mental Health Awareness Month. And in honor of Mental Health Awareness Month, we wanted to make a video discussing the value of therapy and different um, different mental health professions that are very, very helpful and can definitely provide a lot of help to pretty much everyone here. And we want to talk about the different options that are available and why you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to have mental health issues, you don't have to be anything. You can be a normal, hard-working human being. You could be <laughs> legit. blooded American. You, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You could be legit as you want, you know, you could be driving a BMW, like, you know, a million dollars, but, you know, having a million dollars is overwhelming and um, need a therapist. People. Yeah. Well, I mean, everyone has their own stressors, I guess. Yeah, yeah so, absolutely. We all have different stressors. Yeah, so, so whether it's like you said, uh, money related, whether you have too much or maybe you don't have enough, maybe it's, um, you know, social situations. You don't have friends or you don't have a romantic partner. It could be anything or you could just be you know struggling with yourself like what you don't know who you are you normal don't know how people you deal feel. with normal problems every single day and it really really helps to have somebody to talk to uh, especially somebody who has an education but it's really finding somebody that you can connect to who can give you an unbiased you know discussion mm -hmm. and some dialogue and feedback that you can't get from your best friend from your girlfriend or your even boyfriend. if they have good advice and good intentions yeah, yeah like it's like if you're going to someone that's not a personal trainer like you and yeah. they're giving you like advice like hey like you should work out x amount of times a week and blah 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 but it's better to go to a personal trainer because you know they're well versed in yeah. that they'll know a little bit more specifically they'll have the right they'll tell you the right forms and stuff like that and it's kind of well, like the same thing yeah i mean uh they're much more likely to give you accurate advice than somebody without a credential exactly uh, that is for sure or somebody without an education but mind you it's a matter of finding a, a good professional because there's a lot of people in the personal training field that don't know what they're talking about and there's people without a credential that are great but mm -hmm. the same thing applies to, um, you know, mental finding health practici practitioners. Yeah, Ac absolutely. Uh, there are some people that have like, I personally have gone to a counselor and had a bad experience. Like literally he told me that I was like, what was the word needy? Yeah. I was like, <laughs> what the? And I was just like upset over a breakup. I'm like, oh, I think this is a normal reaction. You're so I needy. never went back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, okay. But yeah. Bye. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's actually, um, I mean, that's, you hear a lot of people that have bad experiences. And for me personally, when I was growing up, you know, I, I had multiple therapists to deal with certain family issues I was dealing with, and uh, it was hard. You know, I found some good ones, I found some not so good ones, I found some outright, like they should have their medical license revoked type of people. <laughs> and so it's a matter of trial and error, but the thing is, it's worth it. You know, because when you have that, that appointment with that, with that health professional that, that knows what they're doing, and they're good for you, a lot of doors start to open up. Yeah, you, you know? start thinking about things differently, but you start shifting the way you act or think and it's it's actually kind of relieving too when you're actually talking to someone that you have a legit therapeutic alliance with because they're they're easy to talk to and you feel understood and ultimately humans want to feel understood so uh we're actually we're trained i'm studying to be a licensed counselor so it's like we're being trained on how to listen better like and you, you know you may think that like it's you know just sitting here and talking to someone like you'll know how to listen to someone but it's like it actually requires a lot of skill to actively listen without yes. being judgmental or with knowing how to where to kind of intervene push. Yeah. yeah no 100 percent. that's actually a scientific term active listening it's a very important communication skill in all in all aspects of life you're, you know, even for a normal person, but especially for somebody that you go to and you're seeking uh, counseling from, or you're seeking, you know, help with your mental health from, right? Mm -hmm. And a mental health professional, uh, they need to know how to listen to you in a, in a um, engaged fashion and actually paying attention to who you are on a deeper level. Like mm -hmm. it's something that, that is not just like natural for people. Like if a lot of times, like for example, like you might go to your mother and this is a, a good one because, you know, 
you go up to your mother, you're like, mom, like my girlfriend broke up with me, wah. And then your mom's gonna be like, oh yeah, well, I'm sorry to hear that, you know, that, that must suck. Or they weren't good for you anyways. Yeah, I didn't like, I didn't like her anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, you know, if you have a, a counselor to talk to about that, they will not tell you something like that, you know. Or and if they do, they're probably not a good counselor, just saying. <laughs> well, and the other thing is it's a matter of guiding you to seeing that for yourself, you know. Because mm -hmm. one thing for your mom to say, yeah, uh, she wasn't good for you. It's another thing to have like a, a psychologist, for example, who, you know, starts to ask you questions about the relationship, ask you questions about how you feel about the relationship, and guide your own understanding towards seeing the pros and cons of the situation you know, that's completely different than somebody else just telling you the pros and cons. Exactly. It's, um, humans kind of are, we have like this thing inside of us where we kind of want to solve the problems ourselves. So hearing other people, I mean, I'm sure, especially when you were a teenager, you probably had like this whole thing when someone would tell you what to do, you're kind of like, uh, I don't want to do that. Oh, but then yeah. you'd end up doing it like after anyways and be like, oh shit, I should have done that a long time ago. Right. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like the same thing. And that's kind of like, what counselors and other mental health practitioners are taught to it's like we do not give advice like that's actually a misconception that a lot of people have it's like you're not gonna go to us and expect like you're gonna have the answer especially on the first the first time you go mm -hmm. uh, maybe if you're getting like you go specifically to go get a test done to see if you have a, something but even then it will probably take a couple of visits to different mental health practitioners or even the same one so they could really get to know you and see like who is this person in front of me? Mm. So it's like, what do you need as an yeah, individual? Where you know? are you going? What is right for you? Not, let me tell you what's right for you. Yeah. And uh, so, um, what are the differences? What's the difference between a psychologist, a psychiatrist, and a counselor? So ultimately, they're all mental health professionals, obviously. Um, a psychiatrist is a medical doctor. They'll go to medical school. Um, they could prescribe uh, basically anywhere in the United States. Um, they, they have that scientific approach. A uh, psychologist is somewhat similar. A lot of the time they are not able to prescribe medication. Some can, mm -hmm. um, but they still have that scientific approach. Um, where counseling on the other hand, oh, let me go backtrack to you. Um, psychologists also have um, they do a lot of talk therapy type things too. They'll have conversations with you. You'll actually sit down and have therapy sessions. Psychiatrists, you'll go kind of like a doctor a lot of the time. You'll go like, okay, medications, yeah, yep. like in and out by like a regular yep. doctor visit. Um, but that's not necessarily great. Psychiatr <laughs> psychiatrists are usually the, the type of practitioners that most people have a bad taste in their mouth from. Mm -hmm. and, it, and the reason why is because they don't establish a relationship with you mm -hmm. and if they do it relative you know compared to uh, a psychologist or, or or a counselor the connection you'll have with a psychiatrist is minimal it's yeah. like, like literally like a doctor because they are yep. trained in a different way than psychologists and counselors right um, especially like specific psychologists that are you know doing therapy and counselors are specifically trained for therapy as well um, so we're taught all those skills it's um, counselors are more like art forms type of thing you're you're gonna learn things like how to communicate better or how to go and be introspective kind of thing um, psychologists also will do that but they're like I said more science-based so they'll still have more of that rigid outline maybe you'll go to a counselor and they'll have a little bit more of the, of a hippie vibe, I guess you could say. But. So, what do you mean by science-based? Because my psychologist sounds a lot like a counselor, but that's because he uses talk therapy and cognitive yeah, exactly. behavioral therapy. So that's that's the therapy side of it. That's the mm -hmm. the art form. So, like, um, psychologists are so what is more, science -based? more theory, more research, that kind of thing. Where counseling is more, let's talk and get to know each other. So for me, uh, you know, science-based, the term science-based, it means um, observation mm -hmm. and uh, trial and error. Exactly. And yeah. uh, using evidence, using evidence to establish um, prescribing treatments and things. Yeah, and, and counselors do the same thing. Exactly. But we're more for focused on the therapeutic alliance that we have with someone, so the relationship we have with our clients. So like. Hmm. making sure that we're connecting not to say that psychologists don't do that but 
the way at least that so counselors are different. more are more talk therapy um, and you guys do not do things like um, like association disassociation type stuff like for example obsessive compulsive disorder if somebody sees a doorknob and they constantly have that no we still do that we still also we do also um, so you guys are very similar to psychologists exactly. then, yeah because uh, this all the psychologists that I've visited and from a lot of the people that I talk to they 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 talk about psychologists as you know more of a talk therapist type of thing so that's an interesting well, cause thing. Well, there's some psychologists that are also like researchers. Mm -hmm. So those are like the ones that are in the lab. And psychologist, stuff like that. the definition, you know, what it means is, you know, the a a they're studying the science of the human mind. Exactly. So and so it could be many different things. There's many different fields of psychology, is what exactly. you're saying. Exactly. And counseling is more specific to it's the It's specifically like we're gonna, you know, have a conversation here. So that's basically like the major difference too. Because a counselor sounds a lot more like a friend, like a professional, but like they're like <laughs> yeah. a professional friend. I mean, at least from my experience, we are taught kind of like in that form where we're. Like yeah, let's connect with our clients. Let's make sure that they know they're being understood. So mm -hmm. yeah, we're we're more focused on that than we are on like, hey, let me use this theory on you. Let me use like this other thing. Not to say we don't use that because they are very important. Mm -hmm. They they help a lot, tremendously actually. But ultimately, we are there to connect and help our clients feel understood. Mm -hmm. So so counseling is essentially a more. Um, it's more geared towards talking to the person and developing a connection. Yeah. And so psychology can be a, a variety of different things, including mm -hmm. a lot of the techniques that they use in counseling. Exactly, because um, uh, counselors also do interventions and stuff like that. You'll, you could talk to a counselor if you have an eating disorder, PTSD, interesting. Um, any mental health condition, yeah. really. So. Yeah, it's interesting. You could also diagnose, too, like... So, psych so, so psychologists can be a variety of different things, mm -hmm. whereas psychiatrists are almost purely the big, you know, the, the pharmaceutical type. Exactly. A yeah. lot of the time, people, um, counselors and psychologists, will send their clients to a psychiatrist purely just for medication. Mm -hmm. For medication, and so um, you know, just to be clear, you know, there are a lot of conditions that people might suffer from where it's so severe that if that they need to get medicated. Mm -hmm. You know, like some people, if they're on the verge of suicide, if a medic, cause like, you know, obviously, you know, if people who follow me on my channel, they know that there's a lot of side effects and things, these medications, and a lot of times there's natural alternatives. But for somebody who's on the verge of suicide, if a medication can stop that person from, from committing suicide, you just saved a life, you know. Or anxiety disorders too, mm -hmm. panic disorders. Something um, that prevents somebody from enjoying their life fully. You know yeah so. or there there's like a tremendous strain on them at the mm. time that it's like could be their life or death or like they, they can't even live their life yeah yeah and I agree with you on that like mm. I'm I'm more of like natural based like alternative medicine kind of thing mm. um, but there's some cases where especially like um, mm. schizophrenia where yeah. it's like kind of like there's really it's there's no other hard. options yeah, yeah. No, 100%. Like there, there's mental health issues out there that are very. Um, there's not a lot of. There's not enough evidence to. There's not enough research in general. Right. Yeah. To really know what's really going on exactly. and how to prevent it, how to intervene. So. And it's very nuanced and it's multifaceted with a lot of these, you know, like uh, schizophrenia, um, and things like bipolar disorder. If someone who has rapid cycling bipolar. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a hard dangerous. thing. That's dangerous. Yeah, that's Absolutely. super dangerous, and that's why um, that's really important to uh, for people with bipolar to be regulated in some way, um, and especially with therapy. Like, and actually, people with bipolar disorder do not do good on medication alone. Um, they're actually known to. Um, it makes it worse. Not in some yeah, cases. They, they don't even sometimes take their medications too. Yeah. Like they start, like I said, cycling. Yeah. They don't. They get off their meds, and it gets worse. And of course, the efficiency of these medications could be debated, mm -hmm. but um, I mean, some of them are actually technically toxic to the body, but it's the degree that they're the majority of them. The, body. the majority of them are toxic to the body yeah. in some way, shape, or form. But regardless, though, if it has a therapeutic application that can prevent somebody from hurting someone else or hurting themselves, mm -hmm. then it is beneficial, absolutely. Exactly. But you know, for me, what I what I believe personally. And I was, you know, people who followed me for a while probably know my story. I, I was in that situation. And what I see 
is that there's a lot of people out there who are diagnosed and they're put on medications who might not need those medications and they might actually do better if they just go to a good psych uh, psychologist or, or counselor mm -hmm. you know actually there's been a lot of studies where it mm. shows that going to counseling alone does have yep. a more significant effect on mm. a person's mental health condition absolutely or, um, whether it is a mental illness or whether it's stresses or anything if there is a benefit to it as opposed to just taking medications because usually those are hit or miss like that it's very dependent on the person so it, you get more out of therapy than you do out of just taking medications alone yeah and so you know there's a variety of interventions that you know have been shown to be as helpful as certain medications or even mm -hmm. more helpful than certain medications and talk therapy and cognitive behavioral therapy in particular um, has been is one of those and there's mindfulness a, is another one as well. I've absolutely. talked about it. Um, that's one, actually one of my favorite um, theories to go by because it teaches a person how to be in the moment, how to accept what's going on, and putting you um, in the position where you're looking at what you value as a person and achieving or I guess kind of like aligning yourself with those values like with your actions and committing to it. So that's acceptance commitment therapy. So um, what do you think are some of the reasons why a lot of people do not um, seek therapy, you know? Uh, there's definitely a stigma, especially mm. I think in, um, in the United States or even in Mexican um, culture or I guess maybe Latino culture in general, there is this thing where you're seen as like weaker if you have a mental health condition. It's, mm -hmm. And it's sometimes funny too because I know there's some well even if you don't have a mental health and this is a thing is even if you don't have a mental health condition therapy can be very powerful I have a exactly. therapist guys and I you know I just saw him today I have a therapist and he, he's helped me deal with a lot of just you know um, life problems mm -hmm. but what she just said is crazy is the fact that even people with mental health conditions um, there's a stigma against them to seek therapy Exactly. Like you're not strong enough to seek their, uh, uh, to deal with your problems, huh? Like you're not strong. You, you have you to have... You can't do it by yourself. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's that stigma. And that's actually why um, there is reason to believe that there are more people out there that have mental health issues that they're not addressing. It's like whenever you talk to someone and they're like, oh, I have diabetes. Like they mm. don't have shame in it because it's normal. Like, you know? But when you, if someone were to come up and say, like, I have a generalized anxiety disorder, like, you kind of, like, you'll get a look sometimes. Like, I get that if I say it, like, if it's normal. Some people don't see it as normal. And, and for me personally, I believe that most people have symptoms of a variety of different mental illnesses. And they may not be, like, you know, severely mentally ill. But obviously everybody... Maybe they're not diagnosable, but they're, right. like, sometimes, yeah, like, we we're humans we have a lot going on and eventually it starts building and yes. we show symptoms yeah and they they're they could be borderline mental illness related like <laughs> like I mean you know especially in our modern times you know it, it's pretty obvious that uh, so people who work a normal nine-to-five job where they have to sit at a desk you know with artificial lighting and all of mm -hmm. these things and they're probably you know they're probably eating a bunch of sugar and stuff, but regardless, they're confined in a little space looking at a computer screen in a very, like, overstimulating environment, mm -hmm. but they're sitting at a desk and they're just like, it's driving them crazy. Just the, 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 the fact that they're sitting there nine to five, five days a week is crazy enough. That drives a lot of people crazy. But even crazier is you have the stresses of, you know, whatever field you're in, you have a boss, you have coworkers you have to deal with, mm -hmm. and like, um, dealing with in, you know interpersonal relationships and different connections you have you have to deal with all these different personalities a lot of people are stressed out by their customers stressed out by their co-workers mm -hmm. their family members their family members and and that's inside of and even inside and within that nine to five job that's already driving them crazy that they have to be somewhere in order to make a living and then on top you know that they no one wants to be sitting there at a cubicle or whatever. Or even then, like, my, my dad's a teacher and he yeah. gets driven crazy by the administration. And I think that, that would, that's <laughs> probably, like, a more enjoyable job, I would say, than what I'm describing yeah. here. But he actually, he has a lot of issues. He, mm -hmm. um, he doesn't struggle with the fact that he's coaching because he's a coach. He coaches 
his students. He has a pretty Her good dad time. is a cool guy. <laughs> You haven't met him, but yeah, that's, I appreciate you <laughs> saying that. From everything I hear, I, I, I like that guy. I mean, he's guy. cool. He's cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> not uh. saying he's not. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's not cool, huh? <laughs> no. Okay. He's going to watch this. He like... does not watch my videos, which is why he is not cool. Oh, he's too good for you. <laughs> no, it's probably because he thinks I already talk too much at home. Yeah. So he's like, all I'm my friends, this. All my friends, they're like, yeah, why would I watch your video when I have the real thing? But, <laughs> um, yeah, but, you know, being a teacher, obviously. Yeah, it's really stressful. I yeah. mean, you have, you're molding young minds. And then a lot of the time, there's miscommunications with yeah. administration. Like, from what I hear, I know a lot of teachers. Unfortunately, their system, especially in public school systems, is very strenuous. And I feel like, you know how there's a school counselor for the kids? There should be a counselor there for the teachers, like, or even oh, administrators. Yeah. They need really it the stressful. most. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a lot of them need it the most, man. I, I've seen some crazy things coming from teachers. They just blow their minds. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> You know, freak out, run it's out of the like classroom. <laughs> Literally, that's how it seems. Um, and so pretty much, like, you know, the vast majority of people are going to have something that they would definitely benefit from seeing a therapist about. Yeah, and again, it's like not because you have a mental illness, it's because right. you just need to, I don't know, like just release yourself. You have, <laughs> like we all have mental suffering, we all have emotional suffering, we have things that bring us that fight or flight response. Or even then, maybe we're just confused, like we don't know yeah. what the fuck we're doing. Yeah. Yeah, we're just like, uh, should I do this? Should I get this job? Right. Like sometimes I find myself stressed out, not because I'm like, Mm -hmm. in a state of like anxiety or in a yeah. state of depression or any of that it's like sometimes i'm just like i don't know what to do that's it and that's what stresses me out like um you know for example someone might be presented with the opportunity to move to another state and go to school uh, but leave their family behind or they could get a really nice job here and live with their parents you know what wh which one is going to be good for you you know which one should you do that, you know, that's a, a really big source of confusion, things like that, you know, uh, ch choosing one job over another, choosing one relationship over another or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe your boyfriend's cheating on you. Maybe you're cheating on your boyfriend. There's, I mean, you're grieving over a dead person. I mean, yeah, you know. Yeah, there's so many reasons to see a mental health person. These are real things that people yeah, deal with, I've though. Yeah, I've had, non-professionally, I've had conversations with people about all these things it's not just the people that come to you because they need help it's like friends family friends of friends people that you randomly meet i've had this, this is actually kind of one of the reasons i am going into counseling it's like i for some reason people approach me and they decide to like talk to me about like some deep shit i'm like oh okay i'll listen that's cool like it's not that you know i'm not saying i don't care kind of kind of seems like i'm being being nonchalant but it's just like i've noticed that people need someone to talk to it's like well yeah I'm, i was a random stranger back then who didn't even know like what, I, what mm -hmm. the hell i was doing so that's how i was like i don't know what to do yeah. with this it's like now that i'm you know i have better skill set like it's pretty freaking awesome like being able to help other people because i know what i'm doing now well and, and also a lot of people are you know they're scared of of reaching out to their friends and their family members because they don't want to be judged yeah like you know especially in regards to some really deep dark personal things yeah, exactly. we don't want our parents to know that we sacrifice rats to the spirits or whatever <laughs> you know what i mean and so having because uh as far as i know and i might be wrong uh but um there's you know health professional mental health professionals are sworn to secrecy even from the law uh to a degree yes except for like killing people and or things like that or killing yourself that's right. the only reason what we're from from what Either I either elderly abuse, abuse of children, uh, being harm to others yeah. or to yourself. Yeah, that's basically it. I mean, I have and, to memorize that. Yeah, <laughs> and and you know they're they're sworn to that, but uh, I do know that there's health professionals out there that might choose. They might even choose, depending on the situation, not to report the person yeah, for the sake of the greater there's good. Yeah, because there's some people that. Um, like they'll have like suicidal thoughts but it doesn't mean that these people like there's an assessment that's done mm -hmm. and it's basically also professional judgment like are they really on the verge of being suicidal or are they mm. just expressing their extreme negative emotions in this right. way so it's like you know it just depends on the professional yeah their call yeah mm -hmm. so if you pick a if you pick a good um therapist or a good counselor or a good psychologist or whatever it is um, one that you can trust and things like that. And don't that. stop at the first person. Like yeah. if you did not vibe with them, that's yeah. fine. There's so many mental health 
professionals out there if you go to a psychologist maybe see another one yeah or if you go to a counselor see another counselor or switch over to different ones you'll find the person that you connect with more yeah and I mean you know an interesting thing is that for me like I've had you know the therapist I'm with right now uh, I've been seeing him for over eight years now and at the very beginning I I didn't really feel a vi like I was vibing with him but over time I started to realize that the things that he was telling me uh, were helping a lot more than I thought and so getting to know exactly how he works was a really big thing and now to this day every single time I see him like I always feel like a sense of relief and a sense of inspiration and creativity um, that I don't think I can get from another professional so yeah, that's a good point too like yeah, yeah don't just like go to one time too like yeah. sometimes you need to get like it's like meeting a new friend you never know if they're gonna be your best friend just from the first encounter like sometimes it takes some time to develop that relationship with that professional so sometimes yeah just yeah try it out try different hats um, actually another reason to also go into uh, counseling is like emotional regulation like we live in a society where we don't know how to really express ourselves and that's probably why we're kind of afraid to go talk to our family members or friends or whatever because like we do not even know how to begin to express what's going on within ourselves and for a variety of reasons you know I mean for you know some people their parents might have put them in they might have spanked them for crying at a grocery store or something like that you know, or maybe um, you're scared that if you, you know, because you might be angry at your job and if you express your anger, obviously you might get fired. Exactly. You know, and so, you know, a, a good counselor could definitely teach you strategies to, you know, at the very least maintain emotional equilibrium in times where it matters and then deal with those emotions effectively. Yeah, right? or even like, even just accepting how you're feeling because yeah. uh, a lot of the time we're taught like hey like you shouldn't be like upset about certain things too so it's like we it's important to step outside of yourself and like I said mental health mm. practitioners are taught all these really awesome skills and we actually keep going to school after we get our continuing education yeah, we credits, get it. yeah so it's like we're continuing continuously learning with you and even we learn from the sessions that we conduct like yeah, clinical experience. People, yeah. Clinical experience is very, very important in all aspects of health. I'm telling you right now, you know, that's one of the reasons why, you know, counselors are so effective versus like psychiatrists, for example. Psychiatrists, they don't, they have clinical experience with like, you know, pharmaceutical um, tinkering and things, but they don't have experience with actually talking to a certain person, getting to know what exactly is causing you this stress, right? Mm -hmm. And so that clinical experience over time is very valuable. And, it's, and, and from my experience, you know, people watch my channel know I'm really into reading uh, uh, studies and, 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 and I'm really into science and I have textbooks up the wazoo, but I know for a fact you cannot beat real world experience. And most of the mm -hmm. most effective strategies and techniques and the most effective uh, experts in all fields, they are effective because they find it works in practice, mm -hmm. right? And so, so clinical, someone who's been in practice for a long time, they're going to have a better idea on how to help you than someone who doesn't see clients on a regular basis, like your mother, yeah. you know? And even then, like, new counselors and new psychologists, mm -hmm. um, we do, like, internships and stuff like that. And not yeah. only that, it's like a lot of the time, we have based. a natural ability a lot of the time. Like It's their profession. It's, like, it's, it's their it's whole life. Calling. Yeah, like, yeah. we're... And dude, if you're going for a master's or a PhD in something, like a lot of the time, it's because you really, really dig that subject. So that's it's a like, huge investment you're exactly. making. Exactly. So a lot of the time, these counselors and psychologists will be passionate and really care about what they're doing. So absolutely. I mean, it also costs quite a bit of money. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Time and money. So Sp speaking of money, as far as I'm aware, um, you know. Insurance typically will cover a lot of these different uh, therapies. Yes, and actually um, some counselors and some psychologists have like sliding fees. Um, some places have um, free, low-cost counseling sometimes, especially a lot of the time with those though, like so you know, you will be getting an intern. Um, but these people are at the end of their studies, just so you know, so don't feel like they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Like me, I'm going to go into my internship or my practicum this summer. And uh, so it's like, 
maybe I don't have much experience, but like I, I think I'm pretty decent at talking to people. <laughs> well, well, her, she is really, really good at talking to people. I could tell you that right now. She's really good at what she does, but I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, so. And again, I mean, you have you still have a choice within that spectrum, but it's mm -hmm. more it's it's important it's more important that you get help than yeah. to not. If you have the opportunity to do so, you know, and and look into that, look into the opportunities that are available yeah. to you. Google it, man. And even then, like if you don't, if you feel like overwhelmed by way of looking at on the internet, you could also go to like things like Catholic charities. Like there are all these resources. Um, uh, nonprofits they'll tell you what's going on honestly and like I said sliding fees for those of you who do not know what that is that is like they'll look at your income and they'll adjust accordingly how much they're gonna charge you depending on how much you are making or report you are making so it's pretty cool and that's why a lot of counselors are not making that much money <laughs> just saying yeah. it's like we, we what I mean I'm not making any money because I have not started doing that but I mean my the therapist average. my therapist <laughs> mr. <laughs> He's Mr. a psychologist, all right, too. Yeah, it's a little different. Their pay, their pay levels. He's uh, he's got his own private practice. That's true. He was showing me a boat that he's uh, that he just bought. That he's, he that's says, nice. he said that's his escape from the uh, <laughs> pandemic thing going on. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Can't wait till I have my own private practice. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised he's still bawling through everything. Well, but, dude, no, a lot of people, yeah. especially in this pandem pandemic, need someone to talk to, and yeah. it, actually that's the true. federal government is actually that's funding um, some mental health. Um, I don't know like it's mental health something but mm. so they're giving money to the state governments to allocate money for mental health so people could get free counseling if you are affected by COVID mm -hmm. so yeah just so you know research it, it's out there uh, I know for sure in Texas that we that we have money here in the state for that yeah yeah absolutely so is there anything else you want to add Anything we want that we might have missed you want to touch on? No, I think the yeah, comprehensive video. Yeah, this is a really good video. I'm um, hopefully everyone gets something out of it and they go see a counselor yeah. or a therapist of some sort. It that's, does, it, that's, that's the main point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like it doesn't mean you're crazy. It doesn't mean that you're there's something wrong with you. Like as a matter of fact, people who don't seek counseling are are probably going to remain broken until they do seek counseling like or they'll get worse sometimes. Yeah. yeah i mean you're it, it can only benefit you it can only benefit you i see a therapist the water back there is listening to us it hears a therapist <laughs> so you should definitely you know you check into that so right. yeah okay so, so uh you can find melissa arroyo <laughs> I, I'm on Instagram as Holistic Melissa. Holistic Melissa. Melissa with one S, one L. One S, one L, one yeah. S, one L. And you can find me on my YouTube at Wolfgang Lozana. Okay. And then you look me up on Instagram. Just look for Wolfgang Von Lantman Lozana and you'll find me. Right and now. I'll, I'll link it on my YouTube. For too. sure. And also I'll link my Facebook as well. And um, I'll, I'll but, link yeah. her, hers definitely on my channel. Um, and you know, feel free to message me, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think. You know, share your insights, share what how you benefited, or how like your horror stories. Like you know, sometimes we need a good laugh at some of these things too. Or why you do or do not seek uh, oh, yeah, therapy. That's, that's absolutely very important. Yeah, too. that'll help me out whenever I'm talking to new clients too. It's like, hey, what didn't work for you? That's actually one of the things that we ask. Mm. new clients that have had previous counselings mm. like hey why'd you leave this other person hmm. so we don't to make sure that we don't do that shit too so. yeah yeah all right well we'll catch you guys later <laughs> that was very daddy <laughs> <laughs>